Everything that we involve ourselves with as a species involves the exploitation of energy. It involves the exploitation of reserves from under the sands in Saudi Arabia to the north slopes of, of Alaska. Most of the hydrocarbons in the world, oil, gas and so on, happen to be in dangerous places. They happen to be in places that are politically and economically unstable. That represents a risk to people in the first world and it, and it represents a complete lack of opportunity for people in the third world. If you take that away, if you take out the reliance on these kind of dangerous and or limited supplies, you do have a new world. There's, there's, it, there's no question about that. Um, you have a world that is a lot freer. I, I don't think we're, we're really at a state in, in our life since we're going to run out. That's not the issue. The issue for us is very much making it better, making it cleaner, making it more efficient, making the, the experience more um, manageable, less, less stressful. Um, it's, it's about convenience. What we've done is we've developed a technology that can replace traditional energy sources. It has the potential to be absolutely huge. It has the potential to change everyone's life. It has the potential to change your life. Think of the amount of things you did today that involved electricity or energy in some way. The technology develops free energy. The free energy can be used to move your car. It can be used to power your phone. Um, it can be used to take your house off the grid. There's an ecological advantage to it. There's absolutely there's a, there's a cost saving to it, depending on how people utilize it. But ultimately, for me, the advantage is convenience. The advantage is never having to plug your mobile phone, never having to go to a gas station. And that's, that's for me, the, the, the real driving factor. The technology is the ability to construct certain magnetic fields that when you travel around the magnetic field, starting and stopping at the, the same position, you've suffered a net gain of energy. Quite simply, the, the analogy would be, you know, you walk to the top of the hill and you walk back down to the bottom of the hill, but in doing that, you've gained energy. And, and it really is that simplistic. This is uh, another step in the evolution of the development and exploitation of energy. There's, there's absolutely no question about that and everything that means. But there's roadblocks and, and, and the first roadblock is the world of science. This is plan B. Um, plan A was to do it quietly. Plan B is where we are. Plan C might be build, build a car. <laughs> Our original strategy was to build support quietly behind closed doors and, and try to get these guys to move as a group but it's simply going to take too long we, we could see five to seven years of going around the academic and the scientific community um, before being able to get to a consensus position and as a business that makes absolutely no sense it's important to us to make people aware that this is out there because if we issue a challenge to the scientific community at large and nothing happens it does beg the question, why? The importance of validation is, is fundamental because the claim is so rails against so much thinking from, from, from ordinary people um, through the engineering technology community, through the academic community, that it, it's, it's a prerequisite um, that, that this is embraced by science and accepted by science. And that's why we've had to put, it, put the, the process of testing the technology and supporting our claims into the public domain. These are the people that we all interest or the development of our civilization. That's a big part, it's a big part of our world is scientific development. So if people who are interested with that don't go and explore the things that have the potential to fundamentally change your world and, and why we haven't been doing it. The limit to this kind of technology is a, is a theoretical limit. It's a limit imposed by the laws of physics, by the principle of the conservation of energy. And building products and building devices um, is only part of the question. The fundamental challenge here is to say, do these laws apply in this instance? If they don't, um, then building products and commercializing becomes a simple engineering task. We're a technology development company. Um, this is one of the technologies we've developed. In some ways, it looks like the best technology you can develop in the world but in actual fact it's probably the worst because the commercial battles in this arena are far larger than a, than a company of 20 people should rationally engage in because we have to fight public opinion we have to fight the scientific community and we have to fight the energy industry you couldn't pick a worse battleground